And let's have a look at quite an interesting story about a man who was said to be before the courts. Um, so, uh, Sean Plunkett, uh, police have applied to withdraw unlawful publishing charges against the broadcaster. Now, of course, uh, what that means, Sean Plunkett has come out and saying, happy to report that all charges against me in relation to publication of a family court proceeding have been withdrawn by police. That's not actually the case, by the way. That's inaccurate. As of Are right you now. saying now, Sean Plunkett isn't being 100% well, accurate? Let's be fair. I've I've heard from people who know this world, and they basically they basically say it will get with if the police are suggesting it to be withdrawn, it will get withdrawn. But as of right now, they haven't been withdrawn. Uh, broadcaster Sean Plunkett, who is facing charges of unlawfully publishing family court documents, may soon be free from prosecution. May soon be free from prosecution. According to a document obtained by NZ Me, police have applied to the district court to withdraw all charges against Plunkett. The application will need to be decided only on by a judge before the charges are formally withdrawn. So I'm, I'm, I'm splitting hairs, and I know I am, but they're not withdrawn yet. But the, the, the summary of most people who seem to know this world a bit seem to say that the judge is just a rubber stamp. So if Plunkett had said the charges look like they will be withdrawn, probably fair. But he says they have been withdrawn, which they haven't yet. Now, I'm not saying that to then have to make a culprit tomorrow and go, no, we were wrong. They've been withdrawn today. They, they, it looks like they probably will be, right? But I'm just hmm. trying to be accurate here. We're just poking the bear. This is why I'm not a policeman, <laughs> by the way. Because if I was a policeman going, oh, well, we'll withdraw those charges. You know, we'll, we'll request they have those charges withdrawn. If I saw that article, I'd go, oh, really? Oh, okay. No, they're going back on. They're going back on. Yeah. Because you're a dick. Um, according That's to the charging minute. documents filed in April, the 58-year-old broadcaster was charged with two counts of publishing a report of family court proceedings ident un uh, identifying a vulnerable person. Under the Family Court Act, any person may publish a report of proceedings of the court, but the report cannot identify any person under 18 or deemed by the court to be vulnerable. The term report uh, uh, includes news articles, social media posts, or other written publications. Both charges carry a maximum penalty of three months imprisonment or a $2,000 fine. Today's application, filed by uh, police prosecutor Morgan Spate, says police recently reviewed the charges and believed, quote, the subject of the publication does not meet the uh, definition of a vulnerable person. Now, um, there was quite a bit of pushback on Sean Plunkett's uh, site. Um, you know, people saying, doesn't mean you're not guilty of it. Uh, no crime, then republish. Oh, this is my favorite. No crime, then publish the details again. <laughs> um, so I, I took to Twitter and I said this. Sean Plunkett is parading around telling people police have withdrawn the charges laid against them for breaching a family court suppression order. This is not quite accurate. And I think that's a fair way of saying it. It's not yeah. quite accurate. It looks like there probably will be. But as of the time I wrote this tweet, it's not quite accurate. Police have applied to the courts to have the charges withdrawn, so they aren't yet. They may be, but as of today, they are not, as a judge needs to authorise the decision. Um, the second point is the reason for the potential withdrawal of charges is that the person who Plunkett outed did not meet the definition of a vulnerable person. So I read it as he did breach a suppression order just against someone who the, uh, the courts don't protect. That's that's how I see it. So there was a there was that, and uh, that's something who didn't predict. Um, and then I've actually put a call into the police prosecutions to try and get some more details about it. That's still ongoing. We'll see what happens. A bunch of uh, people commenting on that, but one of the people who commented on it was uh, was Mr. Sean Plunkett. And Mr. Sean Plunkett said to me, "You really are a moron." Remember, this is the group oh, of people who are like, you know, <laughs> no ad hominems. We'll go to the facts. No ad hominems. Da 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 da. Uh, and I'll just go through some of the responses for you too. You might enjoy this more than anybody else, but then we'll but then we'll get to the sum, <laughs> summation of it. My response was: You are an adorable ex public broadcaster who is about to not be able to carry your one hundred and fifty thousand dollar monthly burn rate once business mummy and daddy runs out. Maybe laws and Devlin should start looking for new jobs. I'm sure you'll be fine with your unauthentic. I realise inauthentic, unauthentic right wing grift, but others won't be quite so lucky, eh? Uh, and his response was: Thanks for confirming. Now this is where I thought: Nah, let's have some fun. Why don't you ask me to come on? You ask everyone else to come on and talk about it. Why don't you ask me to come on and talk about all the background information I know about your operation, the dealings of people, uh, dealings of people with that you've used to work with? Uh, open and honest debate. His response: You can ring them to my show anytime. Right, uh, it's just that you're always saying people should come on my show and we can talk about it, especially when it's someone you want to bully. But it seems you won't offer me the same honour. Fine, it's your your show, your prerogative. To which he said, "Well." You are somewhat challenged, mate, but I presume you can make a, uh, you can use a phone. And then I put up the uh, the uh, Monty Python, run away, run away, run away. So 
No, um, I actually, there was another tweet in there that hasn't come up in this thread. I'm not entirely sure why, but I said to him, I offered him a deal. I said, how about I come on your show? I'm not quite sure why it hasn't come up. If I go in here, it'll come up. I made him a deal and the deal was, in fact, I think a couple of people liked it. Maybe I can find it if I go here because I know Radar liked it. Um, I said to him, here we go. I said to him this, I'll do you a deal. Let's chat live on here. Every time I interrupt you, I'll pay you $100. And every time you interrupt me, you can pay me $50. No filibustering. Deal? Question mark. No response. So, um, you know, I was having a bit of fun with, with uh, Karen. And uh, it was interesting, though, because he does do this a lot. He does say things like, you know, like he's talking to uh, often a woman that he wants to <laughs> shout at. And he goes, just come on my show. You're welcome to come on my show. Come on my show, Suze Wilson. Come on my show, you know, any, any of the other people. And we'll talk about it. I say to him, you say that all the time, why don't you let me come on your show and we'll talk about it. And his response is, well, you can phone in as a talkback caller. It's funny how he sort of bravely runs away mm. um, about that. It's like it's like you would think that, you know, open and honest conversation. And, and the offer is, and listen, if you're a fan of Sean Plunkett, um, you should be actually pushing him because, you know, I've kind of challenged him to a conversation on his show and he hasn't, he said no. Right. So I'm just saying, if you think he's this big, you know, strong sort of broadcaster who's always got the answers, then maybe you should be saying to Sean Plunkett, you should have Pat on because because you'll destroy him, Sean. You know, as long as we can have that deal, I will pay you a hundred dollars every time I interrupt you, Sean. And when you interrupt me, you can pay me fifty. I think I'll be up by the end of the conversation, Joey. I don't know what you think about that. <laughs> it's it's such a common tactic from these guys though, isn't it? You know, yeah. debate me debate me in the marketplace of ideas uh and by marketplace of ideas i mean a battlefield of my choosing where you're coming uphill and i have the right to hit the big red button and dump the call <laughs> um you know it's you know the, the, someone in the chat says he's just wasting your time and that's that is, is that is true and no, it is. is literally it is literally sea lining it is yeah. it is wasting your time and that is a big problem if you don't have time to waste. Yeah, I had some fun today. if you today. like to play with your food, yeah. then, then go for it. I mean, I, I, I certainly do. I love to wade into these things going, I'm risking nothing. I just want to make some points and get out and see what happens. And, yeah. I, I mean, he's not a serious broadcaster. What, do, do you want to make a bet, Pat? Do I pull out one of my famous bets here and go, you know, once he's burned through his money, he's going to be on reality check radio. Anchoring no, I, I, I've been thinking about this. I'll tell you what I think will happen. Here's, here's, here's Pat's prediction. Sound effects, sound effects. Pat's prediction is they'll burn through their money. So I don't know if you've seen at the moment, they're looking for people to pay $3 a month to become members. Sorry, $3 a week to become members. And if you look at the thread, I was I was uh, associated this by, associated this? I was informed of this by someone else. And I so I went and had hmm. a look at it today. If you look at their thread, um, most people in the chat, when, it, when they put it up for $3 a month, they're saying, why would we give our money to you? You're a grifter. We give our money to Reality Check Radio. That's a really common theme all the way through. So remember we talked about Plunkett's Dilemma way, way back, that he was mm. he was pitching this as a place for these conspiratorial people, the anti-vaxxers, anti-mandate, you know, anti jacinda groups. And at some stage, he was going to either have to follow that line. We've been saying this since they started. Follow that line through, which is not where he sits authentically. I know lots of people remember who know Sean Plunkett from broadcasting. That is not where he sits with his politics. So that means at some stage, he was either going to have to cut that tie and risk losing all that audience, or he was going to have to start continuing down this fake path. Now, he's pretty much cut mm. that tie. He sat down with business mummy and daddy, even though he says he has all the authority to make the decisions, and together, he's already publicly talked about this, he decided to um, to stop going down that path. So now he's in a position where all those people who are occasionally tuning in and out, and he has a big audience, I'm not, let's not bullshit, much bigger than us, aren't going to fund him or finance him, because they don't like the other stuff he's doing, yet that's still probably the, a, a big part of his audience. So I've heard from industry insiders, again, I'll say people who are in the know, people who work in broadcasting and media, that his burn rate at the moment is about $150,000 a month. Now, he got Jesus $2 million bucks Christ. out of that. Yeah, and that's including he's getting tens of thousands of dollars from some memberships. But the problem is if you're getting fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a month from memberships and you're already burning between one hundred and fifty and two hundred dollars and k, once you get to the end of business, mummy and daddy, you don't have enough to survive. So what's going to happen is it's going to shut down. Uh, Laws is going to have no work. Devlin's going to have no work. 
Most of the producers are going to have no work and Plunkett will become an Alex Jones type character doing it on his own by himself. And he'll have used business mummy and daddy's money, just like he used public broadcasting money at RNZ and Fair Go to build his profile to continue feathering his own nest. There's what's going to happen. There's the prediction. You watch it come I, through. I'm, I'm not going to take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to take that bet. Uh, but yeah, the, the cheek of someone that has nominally has $3 million to run his, his little hobby podcast thing, sticking his head out for more from his listeners. Is, yeah. You know, just do it our way. Have no money and stick your head out. Well, if we had if we had three million, you said three million. I think they got given two million. But if we had three million dollars, we could have a staff of four working full time for probably six years, with with zero other income coming in. Like we could do that today. So um, yeah, it's just it's it, this is what's going to happen. This is what I think. I think at the end of it, it will fold. Well, when I say it will fold, maybe he'll keep the branding. But that's actually at the moment, I actually think he might have told me this when I podcast with him. He might have said. Um, that they own sixty percent, the Wilson family. Is that right? The Wilson family, whatever it is, the trust. Uh the right, the right family the foundation. Right family. And so I was gonna, I was about to say he might get to keep the branding and stuff and go on off his own, but he probably doesn't own the majority of it. They probably own the majority of all the assets, which will include the name and the branding and the website and the Facebook page and all of that. But he'll probably launch something the next day by himself, and you know, you go from having to bring in one hundred and fifty k a month to bringing in. 20k a month or 15k a month and you do quite well for yourself mm. and that's probably that's my prediction that'll be what happens